Sarah Pritchie Stroke and Autism. What we're going to do today is show you how to identify the symptoms related to injector failures and or possible CP3 failures, return rates and balance rates. Um, this is a problematic issue on 2001 to 2004 LV7 VIN 1 injectors um, on the 2500 HD, 3500 HD platform. Uh, so let's get this started and I'll show you how to do this. All right, this is an O2 2500 HD with the uh, LV7 Duramax. The customer has already replaced the uh, fuel filter head that's down there on the uh, underneath that boost pipe. The fuel heater and the uh, primer assembly is located there. Right down inside of here is the fuel pressure regulator. The customer has replaced that on his own as well as put a plug in the fuel pressure relief valve that's located on the junction block here on this particular LV7 as all of them um, of this RPO VIN code. Okay. You're going to need a scan tool to do the following, and that is if this vehicle starts. It is warm right now. The main complaint with this vehicle is um, extremely long cranks, hard or no starts at all. Uh, let's see if it wants to start right now. Uh, the balance rates are actually fairly acceptable. Um, just because balance rates show uh, an acceptable quantity doesn't necessarily mean that the injectors are bad. Uh, balance rates are a measurement of one cylinder to the adjacent cylinders and how fast the crankshaft responds through the crankshaft sensor. Uh, if eight injectors are bad, of course it's going to show all eight injectors as giving an acceptable range because they're all putting out less than they should be. Um, balance rates are a great test for one or two individual injectors, um, but in this case um, all the injectors look like they may be compromised, as I do know that there is excessive return rates. So let's see what we get. Yeah, it's not going to start for us. All right, what we're concerned with right here, though, is this value and this value. This is actual fuel rail pressure over desired fuel rail pressure. Um, after a half a second or a second of most crank time, these two values should match. This is millipascal. You can also know it, uh, note it in pressure. Um, it should be approximately 5 to 5,500 PSI at idle. Uh, the LB7 will reach about 24,500 PSI wide open throttle or max capability of the CP3 when it is not... Uh, in a, in a stroker form or any modified form. So let's, uh, let's go outside and I'll show you how to get started with return rate test. What also should be known is this vehicle had an inline module, such as an edge or a banks or anything like that that plugs into the Delphi connectors. You should always begin any electrical or fuel tests by removing any of those devices, um, not because the device itself might or is compromised, but the circuitry within, the, the pins, the connectors, any of those cavities might be uh, compromised in some way or shape or form and that might uh, skew your test, um, you know, whatever. It could be through the, uh, the fuel pressure regulator or any, anything. So you wanna make sure that that's, that's removed because it's a simple, uh, simple variable that can be eliminated. Um, what you wanna do here is go through your the power distribution center. Uh, this fuse right here, number one, is located between these two relays. This is the injection B 15 amp. This will disable, get this to focus. This will disable the FICM, enabling you to crank it for the duration that you're looking for without starting. And that's what we're looking to do. So we're gonna pull this 25 amp fuse out from right here. Lay it right here safely. Now we're gonna go downstairs and I'll show you how to get the test underway. All right, up in the Northeast here, we have a big corrosion problem, as you can see on this vehicle here. There's a considerable amount of rust. This is the fuel cooler, and on the fuel cooler here, you have your return lines. This return line is so rusted, it will not budge, turn, twist, or anything. Um, so what I've done is taken the return line off of the clamps on the chassis, and I've located a spot like that one right there that was so rusted that um, it wouldn't hurt to cut it. So I took a tubing cutting tool like that. You can get that at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, you want a nice clean cut so that you can rejoin these two lines together without any, uh, any risk of it rupturing. The return pressure is very minimal at best, so there's little chance of it ever blowing a hose or anything. Uh, these here are all compromised as well. So without damaging the fuel cooler or having to replace any solid lines getting very costly, it's very simple to just uh, do diagnostics by removing this section of line right here, which is just severing it, not taking any line out at all, and putting this loop in here. This hose is going to go into this empty bottle right here. It's just a one gallon um, AMS oil container. And we're going to capture the fuel during 15 seconds of cranking time. Uh, what we're looking for um, is 
no more than 100 milliliters. That value is obtained uh, through less than four milliliters per injector, which it comes out to 16 milliliters per head, um, two ounces for the CP3, or approximately 67 milliliters total, and that brings you to 100 milliliters of, of max fuel quantity coming from the engine during 15 seconds of cranking. Um, so what I'm going to do off camera, of course, is take this line off, cap the return because this happens to have a full tank and it will start um, draining back under suction. And I'm going to put that line into there and we'll begin cranking for 15 seconds. All right, this container is empty. There's nothing in there at all. Um, the hose is run into this container right here. And we're going to crank it for 15 seconds. We'll use this as our clock. See what we got down there. The line is still dripping a little bit. All right, what we're looking for is less than 100 milliliters at the very most. You can see that hopefully pretty clearly on this here. And as you can see, we got just about 200 milliliters. That is nearly twice the maximum allowed return rate for this vehicle. Um, so what we just determined is that we have a failure of the CP3 return, um, which is through the, uh, the cascade valve or any of the return ports through the CP3. Uh, or we've got one of eight several uh, injectors that are returning excessively. When I did a balance rate test on this vehicle, it showed number six uh, when the engine was cold at approximately nine, which is, uh, that's nine um, cubic millimeters. Uh, that's highly excessive. It should be no more than four under idle and six when it's in drive or reverse. So um, when the truck is uh, warmed back up again, that balance rate happens to go back to about 4.5 or five, but unfortunately the vehicle won't even start right now, so I can't even show you that. Um, but so the next, uh, next course of action from here is going to be discussed with the customer, which, uh, which injectors he wants to put in the vehicle, because um, ultimately that's what he's going to have to do. There's about 130,000 miles in this vehicle. It's actually not even that high considering the year. Um, I'm surprised it actually made it that far, being that ultra low sulfur is usually the culprit and cause for the uh, failure of these injectors. So uh, that's it. Um, your best source for injectors is going through Bosch. Um, we have several other uh, outlets for the performance line of uh, injectors, but you want to make sure that you get a good reputable injector from Merchant Automotive or any direct Bosch dealer remanufacturer. Um, new is of course best. It's hard to come by the new LV7 injectors considering that there's so many of them out there now. Um, that's it. Uh, wish you the best of luck. If you've got questions, please give us a call. Uh, thanks again for watching. So long.